Hello, everybody. Uh, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. I hope everybody is having a great start to your year. I hope that you are uh, having a great week. Uh, but remember what I always tell you. Things are not always going to align or line up with where you think they need to be. Every day isn't going to go exactly how you want it to go. Life is going to challenge you challenge you the vicissitudes of life will roll into your paradise you're going to have unexpected uh distractions and 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 setbacks and all these other things some things that i'm going to talk to you about today but remember what i say if you're still breathing you're still in the fight that's what i want you to understand first and foremost that this is a journey this is a process this is about progressing towards something and when you get to that it's time to progress towards something else so it's about progressing it's about the journey it's about understanding that this is not going to be something that you just sit up and make up in your mind you want it are you going to do it and everything just flows smoothly and I know we got influencers and and, and 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 people online that constantly feed you the idea that everything was just great and everything was awesome and that you know they show you the end result of their lives or what they pretend to be and I, you know you are who you are until you're not as far as i'm concerned i don't have time to go around talking about who's doing what who's not doing what but in the situations where they're showing you their real lives what they're not showing you is all the ills they took on the along the way and it gives the illusion that you are off base or that something is wrong with you or you you're not doing something right when the truth of the matter is you might be directly on course and you have to learn how to really truly listen to god listen to the the watch look at the symbols listen to the sounds and the frequencies and the the the, the voices that are coming to you so that you understand and you when you're actually in a mit, in the midst of something you understand that what you're in the midst of is actually a signal that you're on the right path you have to be able to understand it. sometimes you are getting a signal that you need to switch up you need to change your direction you need to change your alliances and you need to do something different sometimes it's just a part of the preparation for the next stage you can't get to one stage without going through and preparing for it so that you can handle it when you get there so all of that is uh extremely important look in the description box you're going to see uh some opportunities to work with me some other opportunities check those things out uh, the opportunity to work with me doesn't come often. I have really, really strict, uh, scaled back on one-on-one -on -one sessions, although it's the thing I love to do the most. It's time consuming and I only host, have so much time in a day. So there are only so many people I can help that way. So we've done a lot of scaling. We've done a lot of one-on -on groups. Uh, we do a lot of events and we're, we're setting up, uh, some more symposiums and conferences, uh, for this year. All that stuff is great. Uh, I built a lot of courses to help people. That's great. But I do still want to work one on one. I literally thrive and, you know, I bask in that because that one on one thing is unique and it does things that even my best material can't do because I'm there with you. But anyway, that's in the description box. Look. I want to talk to you. It's not going to be long, but I want to really talk to you. We kind of led in with it, but I want to talk to you. In, in, in this journey of life where we are chasing the vision, chasing the dream, chasing uh, our, our aspirations and pursuing our desires and trying to make our, our imprint and do something exceptional, do something phenomenal, do something extraordinary we find that we experience disruptions we experience delays we experience setbacks we have our disappointments and our frustrations and it can really make us feel like we're not on path we're not on point uh we 
feel like we are going backwards and we're spinning our wheels. And I want you to understand something that you've got to really truly become in tune. That's why your prayer and meditation life is so important. That's why your journaling is so important. That's why creating a vision board is so important. Why? Because you really truly have to be in a tune in, in, in tune and attuned to what God is sending you via these interruptions. See, a lot of times what we see as a disruption or interruption is God realigning us. So we, we've been distracted. We've been pulled off. We, we get focused on everything else because there's so much going, there's so much noise in the world today, social media, internet, podcasts out the kazoo, um, streaming services, music, downloads everything's happening in real time when you used to have to wait to four to six four five and six o'clock and ten o'clock to get the news is coming real time down your 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 your, your uh timeline or your news feed or or, or or your twitter stream or whatever you you're seeing your stuff at it and it's coming real time and you're getting all this information and it's it, it's literally over stimulating your conscious mind and you're trying to find space and you'll get knocked off of where you're supposed to be because you got so much going on. And sometimes this, 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 uh, disruption that you're getting is a wake up call. This disruption is saying, no, you're supposed to be here. This disruption will tell you, Hey, look, the people you're around right now can't get you where you're trying to go. You need to build a new circle. Hey, the things you're doing right now won't take you where you want to go. You need to start reading this. You need to go connect with that. You need. And, and, and so what you would consider an adverse condition is the prime environment for you to elevate. God is sending you a message to inform you that you need to shift or in some instances perform you, hey, you're on the right path. That's why you have to be in direct alignment and be in, a in, in tune with, with, with your vision, with your, your aspirations, with your goals, with your dreams, because when you're in tune, you can hear the voice of God. You can quiet the noise. You can sit up and be very certain that what you're hearing is telling you to do X, Y, Z. But I want to, I want, I want to explain something to you in a more primitive way. Delay is not denial. One of the things that I had to learn when I set out to do things outside of the box was that things are not always going to happen in my timing and rarely will it happen in my timing because I set the bar so high. I don't set dwarfed goals. I don't pursue colorless dreams. I, 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 don't, I don't get inside boxes. So when I set a goal, it's a huge goal and, and I don't extend long periods of grace to get it done. I'm very aggressive in my goal setting, which means that I rarely ever hit my goal at the time that I plan. I fail forward, is, as, as my mentor would say. What is failing forward? Failing forward is I set a goal and I set a time to hit that goal. And I set my goals and my times and dates for my goals so that it produces a daily urgency, not an anxiety, not worry, but an urgency, meaning that I wake up every day knowing that I've got to put in work in order to hit that goal. I, I wake up every day knowing that I don't have a whole lot of casual time just to not do anything. Everything has time. Every time, every, every moment has purpose. I have 84,000, I mean, 86,400 seconds in a day. And they got meaning from my time that I sleep at night to my prayer and meditation in the morning and my journaling and, and, and my workout at the gym. Everything has a purpose. And so I wake up with that urgency, but I set my goals so that I don't look up and say, man, I got time. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I don't have I do it tomorrow. One of my mottos is no zero days, no excuses. 
what does no zero days mean? No zero days means that there's not one day that there isn't some form of progress made. Even in days where it seems like it's a setback, there must be a lesson learned. There must be something I'm developing within myself that prepares me to go out and do something beyond what is expected. And so this is what I do. I set these astronomical goals. And then what happens is I rarely get to it in the time that I've set. And if I get to it in the time I set, I feel like I've left something out there because I set it to stretch myself. I'm stretching myself to get to this goal. I'm giving everything I got. What I when I get there, I did when I get to the date, I don't have exactly what I set out to have, but I have a whole lot more than I had when I started. And I know that I didn't leave anything on the table because every day I got up and I put in work. And so what happens is I didn't get the goal that I was striving for, but I got advancement. I got progression. And what happens is I set another goal that's astronomical and I strive for it in the process of trying to get to that goal and not getting to it. I passed the original goal. So I did accomplish it. That's why I tell people failure ain't final unless you quit. That's where most people are losing as they quit, they change, they jump ship, they give up, they toss it to the side, they move on to the next thing. They got their plan B, their plan C, their plan D. So plan A was never really truly an option. Why? Because if plan A is your number one, that means it's the most valuable. It has the highest reward. And that means it's going to take the most work. It's going to have the most challenges. It's going to have the most difficult moments. And what's going to happen is when things get rough, you're going to look over and see plan B is a little easier. I'm going to jump over here. People with plan B's always end up doing plan B. Why? Because it's an option that's easier than plan A. You stick to plan. Now, you may have to change your strategy, but you don't plan. You don't change your goal. You sit up. If this is what I'm going for, I'm going to go for it until I get it or until I die. It's that simple with me. It's that simple. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to fold. I'm not going to go whining and crying. It's a bunch of things I go through. People don't know I'm going through because I don't spend time focusing on what's wrong. I spend time focusing on what needs to be done to make sure it becomes right. And what happens is when I look back over my life, I've had some situations where I got knocked down. I've had some situations where things didn't go my way. I've had some situations where it looks like all hope was lost. But what I didn't do was quit. What I didn't do is fold. What I didn't do is run. What I didn't do is go look and, and, and point fingers and, and talk about all. I sit down and I anchored myself in my vision. I anchored myself in my dream. I anchored myself in my faith. I trusted my design. I trusted my designer. And then I stood up and decided, you know what? I'm going to go out here and I'm going to finish what I started. I don't care how hard it is. I don't care how difficult it becomes. I don't care how long it takes. I'm going to finish it or I'm going to die trying. But what I will not do is turn back. I will not quit. The writer of Hebrews says in chapter 10, verse 35, he says, my soul find no pleasure in those who draw back to perdition. That's utter destruction. But then he follows, he says, but we are not those who draw back. We are those who continue on until the saving of the soul. We don't quit. No surrender, no retreat. We don't stop because it gets rough. We don't quit because people are talking behind our back. We don't fold because uh, it, it's not looking the way we thought it was going to look. We continue on until we finish. What you're going through right now is temporary unless you make it permanent. What you're going through right now is not going to be the end of the story if you don't stop. I'm challenging you to sit up and understand that what's on the other side of this struggle is what you've been fighting for. What's on the other side of this struggle is what you've been hoping for. What's on the other side of that fear, on the other side of that delay, on the other side of that disappointment and frustration, on the other side of that setback is exactly what you've been hoping for, wishing for, and praying for, but you're going to have to go get it. You're going to have to engage the fear. You're going to have to engage the setbacks. You're going to have to experience some delay. That's a part of the equation. But what I want to tell you is those who pr 
pursue it with persistence. Prevail. And, and, and that's it. Those who pursue it with persistence prevail. It, it, it's not how fast you start. It's not how hard you start. It's the persistence. I tell people all the time who, who tell me it's easy for me to uh, say do this or do that because I got this or I got that, whatever this or that is to them. Everybody's got an idea of why someone is successful and they're not. And, and, and I make it very clear, all the things that you look at and you think that's my advantage, the degrees, the businesses, the books, all this stuff that says, okay, well, that's how you do this now. But when I started, I had none of it. I was a, a young black male in, in the inner city of Houston, born to a 15-year-old mother and an absentee father. That's who I was. And I made up in my mind that wasn't going to be the end of the story. So the, the thing that propels me isn't all the things you see. They weren't there. The thing that propelled me was my resilience. I refuse to quit. That's the challenge I'm presenting to you now. I dare you. Take on a mindset of no surrender, no retreat. <laughs> Excuse me. But that's where I'm going to leave you at. No surrender, no retreat. Be relentless. You're going to get hit. You're going to get knocked down. You're going to have people talk about you. You're going to have people laugh. You're going to have people uh, wishing for your demise. Uh, sometimes the people who are wishing for your demise are the very people you're busting your ass to look out for, to provide for, to give to, to help. It, it, it's okay, though, because as you rise, you're going to find a new circle. You're going to find some new friends. And you're going to find some people that will know what to do in your presence and they will bring something to pour into your cup as you pour into theirs. But you got to be persistent. you got to be willing to push past all the things that's making everybody else fold. If you want to have things that most people don't have, you're going to have to be willing to do what most people won't do. Most people want comfort. They want to wake up at a time when they feel rested and they want to go to bed or go chill anytime they get uh, get tired. I'm not saying kill yourself. I'm saying push yourself. That is the challenge that I'm going to leave you with. Um, on that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. As I stated in the beginning, uh, if you are looking for an opportunity to work with me, today would be a great day to take advantage of. As a matter of fact, today is the last day for the offer that's in 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 the uh, description box. But I don't work with as many people as I used to for a number of different reasons, as, as I explained earlier. But when I do make the offer, I get excited because I want to help people change their lives. And if you are breathing, you can change your life. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care how bad it's been. We're not going to look to our future. I mean, we're not going to consult our past for permission to change our future. That's the first thing we're going to learn is we're not consulting our past to ask permission for a higher, better, more exciting, more rewarding future. So on that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Once again, I want to thank you. As I always say, I live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I die on E. <laughs> Have a great day.